Hey up everybody, uh, I've just finished my steam loco off which I've been building over the past 18 to 24 months and I'm doing a little job for it today just to finish things off and I'm going to make a, a, a brass plaque for the front using accurate number and letter stamping. Uh, I did a full playlist of, of building this from scratch, hence the name scratch on the side of loco, showing the complete build of this if you want to take a look back. And also recently I've done a first and second steam test trial so you can have a look at it in steam. But today then I'm going to talk about how I, the method I use for number and letter punching accurately. So I'll move over to workbench and we'll have a look at what I'm going to do. But the plaque I'm making is going to be for the front of the loco with my name on and the date. Right then I'll briefly explain what I'm going to do. And how I'm going to approach this I'm going to be doing it on my hobby mill. So if you've got a hobby mill in your workshop I'm sure you can adapt it in a similar method as to how I'm going to show you here. And what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this shape out of this image on this brass shape of a loco, two screw holes in to screw it onto the saddle under my smoke box. Now I've not, I've not got a CNC machine, there were no CNC machines around anyway when steam engines were built so I'm, I'm using my, uh, my, my traditional manual methods if you like and all you need to do, uh, well before I go into that um, you know I've seen a lot of videos that People, people use quite complicated and very involved jigs and fixtures. Well, when I say complicated, I mean involved to me. They're quite involved. And then you get people doing them freehand, where they just put one letter down, then put the other at the side, and so on. But that's no good if you, if you, when you get to your letter W or your letter M, because they're a lot wider than a standard run-of-the-mill letter, and then the other way, the letter one, the letter I and the number one are a lot narrower. So if you're spacing them side by side, you're getting different spacings. So your spacings are all wrong, and it's difficult to keep everything in line. But by using your X and your Y axis on your on your mill, you'll overcome that. And the way I'm doing it, you've got to find a fixed point on your milling head. That's all you need is a fixed point where you can attach a piece of angle or a piece of plate and in my case it's a piece of angle 25 by 25 or 1 inch by 1 inch approximately 6 inch long and the length the only thing you've got to remember about the length of it is it's got to be long enough so it's below the spindle of your machine of the of the nose of the, of the spindle so it doesn't catch on vice when you're moving along. Uh, I've welded a washer on and the, the way I'm going to do it I'm picking my quill locking mechanism up, the cam in my quill. The bolt that goes through it I'm just put I'm just going to put a nut on and that clamps it to my milling head. And then I've just shaped it to the shape of me of the of the head of the my miller so that's that and then you want you can either use any material you want for this because it's not taking no forces and I've used some hard wood you could use aluminium steel whatever you want and all it is a piece of material two inch by two and a half by one and a quarter I've milled a recess in it to fit on this angle and then on the other end I've milled a slot in to take whichever size number stamp you're using. And then that's going to bolt onto this angle using some, in my case I'm using uh, 4BA. And the only thing that's important is you've got to make sure everything's going to be square and parallel. So that when the stamp's in, it's going to be in line with everything. I'm using a piece of aluminium first just to practice on. If you've not got a, a, a mill in your workshop, 
you could actually adapt this to fit a lathe. I'll not, I'm not dealing with a lathe at the moment, I'm dealing with a mill, but I may do that in another video. But if you've not got a mill and you want to do it freehand, I'll put you onto a good video that, that shows you a, sim a very, very simple way of doing it and a simple jig. If you go to Chris Stevens and put in, I think it's number stamping, he's got a, he's got a very simple method, an easy to make jig where you can stamp everything up and get it in line freehand. So take a look at him, I'll, I'll put a link up to it. Right, so what I'm using is me, uh, me quill lock. I'm taking the handle off the locking mechanism, leaving the cam bolt in, and then I'm fixing this this angle that I've made onto that bolt and just putting a nut on. Now if you've not got this method to do to do it, You've just got to find anywhere on your head that's a fixed point where you can clamp a, a suitable piece of material on to fasten your fixture to for your stamps. And once that's bolted onto that, that cam bolt, that's now rigid, rigidly fixed to my head. And you've just got to make sure it's long enough so that you, the spindle is missing everything so that when you move your table it's going to miss the vise and then all it's a matter of doing is setting your work up in the vise you've got to work your, your lettering out and centralise everything and then once that's done you can make a stamp, put your stamp in and that stamp's just going to fit in there like that and then one strike with hammer and that's it Right, so what I'm going to be writing on the top line is scratch, space, built. Then I'm going to put my name underneath it, and then underneath that I'm going to put the date. So I've got, I'm going to have three lines. Already worked out the length of my plaque, compared with the size of my stamps. And I know from experience that I've got to move over 5 mil each time for the standard size letters. So I don't, I don't normally write all this on because I, I, I know my spacings in my own mind, but just for camera and just for you. When I've done the S, so I'm going to set my X and my Y axis to 10 mil and 7 mil to get my first position. And then once I've stamped my S, you can just put a reminder underneath I've got the, the, what you've got to move over and in my case it's 5mm for the letter C then I'm going 8mm for the space back onto 5 and then when I come to the eye I'm only moving 4mm to the eye and then 4mm away from the eye to get the L and then from the L to the T, it would normally be 5mm spacing, but I found out that an L and a T side by side don't quite look right at 5mm, so I do it 4mm. Then once I've done that line, I've got to move down on my Y axis 8mm to do my next line, and then down another 8mm to do my line where my date's going to be. So that's the S stamped. So I'm going to move over 5mm for the C. So it's 5mm then for the R, once the C is done, and so on and so on. So that's my first word, scratch. 
I need to put a space in now and I'm going to move over 8mm that's 4mm for the space and then 4mm for the B now I've come to a letter I so instead of going the 5mm I'll only be moving over 4mm for the I then from the I to the L another 4mm so that's the I, I want an L now so that's the L done now normally I would move over 5 but because it's a T and an L together I found from experience it looks better with a 4mm gap I'm going to move down now 8mm to put my name on then I'm going to move down 8mm again to the centre and then put the date on either side the centre line ok that's my practice piece completed so what I'm doing I've got my brass set up in its place I've got it set to exactly the same position in the vice so I'm going to use the exact same settings on my dials to go ahead and do the brass and then once I've got it all cut to shape we'll have another look at it That's it for this video then, thanks for watching and I hope that's been useful to you, I'll catch you on the next video, bye for now then.